Well, the first thing we must understand about God is that he is not a man, that God is God. That's probably the first and most basic truth that we need to learn, and hardly anybody knows it. God is not a man. The Apostle Paul, in Romans um, chapter 1, I'm reading verses 21 through 23, for them to be faithless, defenseless, because knowing God, not as God, do they glorify or thank him, but vain were made in their reasonings and darkened in their unintelligent heart. Alleging themselves to be wise, they are made stupid, and they change the glory of the incorruptible God into the likeness of an image of a corruptible human being. All these people who think they're so smart, they don't have a clue who God is. Later in Paul's letters, he says that people are always learning, but never coming to a realization of the truth. This is part of that realization that God is God and that he created everything. He controls everything, holds everything in place and has designed his plan to bring all of creation back to himself through the death, entombment, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. That's his plan. It's set up. It's going exactly the way he planned it, and it'll end exactly the way he planned it to end. There are no surprises. There's no plan B. Even evil, God created it and uses it for a purpose. We can't understand how great things are going to be or understand joy and life if we don't experience pain, sin, and death. And God said in Ecclesiastes that our experience as humans on earth is an experience of evil. We have to go through the evil and the pain first and the death first to understand and bring for us a greater joy and appreciation in what our future with God is going to be when there's no more death, no more sin, and nothing but joy for us all. That's God's plan. When he was in the garden after Adam and Eve sinned. He, he came in, God, and was like, hey, Adam, where are you? He said that in scripture, that God was saying, Adam, where are you? Do you really think that God did not know where Adam was? No, God in scripture condescends to us. He's so mighty and powerful. He's, he's everywhere. He's invisible. In him, we live and move and breathe. Everything we have comes from him. What did we get that we didn't get from him first, considering that everything is out of him, through him and for him. Uh, it's Romans eleven thirty six. So God communicates with us. He steps into creation and he condescends, meaning that he talks to us on our level. He did that in the Old Testament. Um, so that people will understand. It's like us talking to a dog. You know, we go, hey boy, hey boy, come here. Oh, that's a good boy. That's not how we really talk, but we have to condescend to the dog to get it to understand us. And that's what God does to us. He comes here and he talks. Uh, he doesn't talk to me. I don't think he makes uh, audible personal appearances anymore. He did that in Old Testament times. Now we're on the area of grace. It's a little bit different. But when he did come, he condescend and he talked to humans on their level that doesn't mean that's how he is or how he operates he just talked that way and had a relationship so that we would understand it he's above all that he doesn't repent he doesn't regret things he doesn't get angry he doesn't do all this stuff in the absolute sense he does it so that we can see it so that we can understand because that's the only way we understand but god is above all that kind of stuff but people think that he's not. They think that he's watching, waiting to see what we're going to do, and then he adjusts to us. No, that's not the case. And this is really one of the big first public um, speeches that the Apostle Paul gave here in Romans. And he's telling people that God is God. And he is not a man. And that's a truth that is lost today. Because we think that God created people and then you know, he's helpless to see what they're going to do next because he gave them a free will. Well, there's so much scripture that completely destroys any 
possibility of free will. Ephesians 1.11, God works all according to the counsel of his will. He, but in Psalms, he created each one of our days and wrote them down in this book before one of them came to be. All is of God. Um, I mean, it's scripture after scripture. Um, I'm going to go through those here later. But um, the first truth we must understand, if we're going to know God, is that God is God. He is not a man. So if you look at a man, a man doesn't know what's going to happen in the future. He makes mistakes. He does certain things. He reacts to what happens around him. God reacts to nobody. He created every detail of everyone's life. He set everything in the motion and it is going exactly according to his plan as he holds it together. And his greatest demonstration of love was his embodied son, Jesus Christ, coming to this earth, living, being tortured for us, dying, being in tune, being dead for three days, and then resurrecting so that this death and tomb and resurrection will be applied to every single human being. Yes, he gives belief to certain people first, and they come in first and they help the rest come to an understanding of this truth. Others who don't believe this, who God didn't give belief to, they will go through severe judgment based on their lives and what they did. Yes, people will be judged. But when people are judged, they learn righteousness. Eventually, everyone will come to that understanding of the love of Jesus Christ, his death and tomb and resurrection. And that death and tomb and resurrection will apply to every single human being when it's all said and done. And no human being can thwart that because God set it in motion. He put all this, all the crap, all the evil, all the things that seem to be random, all the death. That's all a part of his plan so that when he gets rid of all that and he brings us all out from this life into the next thousand year kingdom, the new heavens and the new earth. And then after that, the consummation where we're all together, we're going to have a joy and an appreciation and an understanding of God's love. that's so much deeper and greater because we went through the experience of evil, sin and death, all part of God's plan. There's no chance that God will fail in any detail of his plan.